Hi, everybody. I'm Derek Gunn, and welcome to another season of Gun on One, this time brought to you by the Inside the Birds Network, and our presenting sponsor is my bookie. Now, Gun on One is a podcast and YouTube interview show that will tell some of the compelling stories you might not know about from your favorite Eagles, let's say, past and present. Compelling stories that are just not talked about that much on a daily basis. Now, we're going to tell you stories about Jason Avant, about how he went from being a street gang member to an activist and an entrepreneur. Brandon Graham, who went from potential first round bust to Super Bowl hero. And of course, former Eagle Carell Buckhalter, who stepped on the wrong side of the law as part of a health care fraud scheme. How he paid his debt to society and the emotional struggles he went through at that time. But this season... Our very first gun on one, we're going to take you all the way back to 1993, because that's where Jeff Stoutland got his start as an offensive line coach. I had the privilege to talk to four of his very first offensive linemen from Cornell. They give us insight on what makes Jeff tick and how he evolved into what he is today. Stoutland University. Now, I can't thank you guys enough for following gun on one each and every season. And of course, I have to thank my presenting sponsor once again, my bookie. So here it is, the first episode of the new season of Gun on One. Sit back and enjoy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Gun on One. This time, we are coming to you from the Inside the Birds Network. I'm Derek Gunn. And of course, uh, one of the more intriguing topics when you talk about the Philadelphia Eagles is their offensive line coach, Jeff Stoutland, who is arguably the best offensive line coach in the National Football League. But to find out more about Jeff, we decided to dig a little deeper. And you have to go all the way back to 1993, which was the first year he ever coached an offensive line at Cornell University. So to give us better insight on what he is all about, what makes him tick, we've assembled four of his former offensive linemen from 1993. We have Jared Constanti, Brian Gormley, David Weinstein, and Mike McKean. Gentlemen, welcome to Gun on One. I appreciate you taking the time. Hey, man. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Having us. Now, to start this thing off, do, do you guys want to do a, a huddle break or something just to get comfortable as we get in the flow should i step aside and give you a moment <laughs> Dave, that I, was your I, idea wasn't it? i think that shit has passed i think we're too old for that oh. too old for that? <laughs> that's fair i think I, age, I think we age out of that that's fair i think that's fair all right okay well as you guys just heard me say a moment ago uh jeff stoutland arguably the best offensive line coach in the national football league and you guys got to know him when he was in his raw stages as an offensive line coach. So Jared, I'm going to stop with you, but as we continue the conversation, guys, just jump in. Um, I don't want to single anybody out as we go along. Just jump in when you, when you, when you think of something and let it be as organic as possible. So Jared, let's go back to 1993 Stoutless first year as an offensive line coach. What were your initial impressions of him? <laughs> so I, I guess I'd say that, uh, the first thing would be that he was very intent. So he was very deliberate, very focused as a coach, but he also had a great sense of humor because he realized he was dealing with clowns like us. And if we were going to perform, he'd have to relate to us. And he found a way. Uh, he, he's a unique dude. I mean, he's not the average coach, but he clearly knew what he was doing and he was very intent. But I, I just remember a, a very consistent sense of humor. He always knew how to get our attention. He knew when we were screwing around, how to pull us back, mostly by engaging in the same humor and then bringing it back. But I just, I remember intent and I remember humor, a lot of it. Were you guys buying what he was selling right from the start? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, he he, he came in mid-season, in, in the off-season, right? So it was... Um, we were being coached by a guy who had been at Cornell for a long time and recruited, I think, most of us, if not all of us. Um, Pete Noyes had recruited us, and he was the offensive line coach. And then he was moved to D coordinator, I believe. And they yep. brought in Jeff, and we were doing our off-season running. So our first interaction with him was with off-season. We used to do twice a week, I think at 6.30 in the morning, up at an inch, we do an hour of agility, which 
linemen, as you may or may not know, don't love to do an hour of agility drills. Um, and uh, he actually had a little private conversation with me after the first one, um, alerting me to the fact that um, I was no longer allowed to stop during the drill, regardless <laughs> of circumstances. And I was to keep going whether I puke and die or not. Um, he was he was not screwing around. Um, but the first thing I wanted to say is that I thought he was a player's coach. I felt that he was on our side every time. I thought he stuck up. Or it was the first time a coach had stuck up for me as a player to the head coach and was saying, we're asking too much or here's why this is happening. And he was really on our side as players. And that's what stuck out to me as tough as he was. I knew he was looking out for us. So that, that's my strongest memory about him. Dave hit um, two things that really fit with me. Um, so Pete Noyce did recruit, uh, definitely recruited Jared, Dave, myself. Brian, did he recruit you? No, he didn't. No, so he recruited three of us, and we were really tight with him. So my first, like, interaction with Stoutland, I wasn't happy to have him. I liked Pete Noyce a lot. Like, that was sad we were losing our coach. And then we got this maniac who came in who was so intense. He looked like he wanted to fight you day one. But I think the biggest thing I took from it was he's the first coach I ever had. Now we were young, right? So you think he went through high school and went through college that would listen to you in a game. If you told him what you saw, he would turn to you instead of yelling at you and saying, just make that block. He'd say, okay, let's work on it. And looking back now, as we are older, we realize that he was only like, seven years older than us he seemed so much older because we were kids you know but he was older, so he really related to us and he was great he would have us at his, ha his house with alice and his wife and we would go there and stack wood and hang out at his house and he'd make dinner for us he was the best he's the best he really was i love him yeah i i, I just to build on it, what everyone's already said I, I i remember him as being extremely intense in your face um and just had, had an enormous intensity about him. And, um, but I always found him very approachable. Um, and what Mike said about him listening to you on the sideline, that's absolutely true. You know, when you came off on the sideline, first person in, in front of you was him asking, what are you seeing? Uh, you know, how do we react to this? What, what should we change? Uh, just, um, very intense, uh, brought that with him, but also very approachable, which I think is a very unique uh, combination. Yeah, he didn't he didn't yell for the sake of yelling. The, the intensity, when you hear intensity, sometimes coaches are there are coaches that will just scream at you. There was actually very little of that. Um, I mean, in, in a drill, in practice, encouraging you, sure. But like I said, in, in the heat of the moment, he wanted to hear what was going on. And he was reacting in the moment with you. He was right there with you. And I think he played linebacker guys. Did, did he come out of a linebacker spot? So I yes. think he had, a, he had a real understanding of what we were trying to do, trying to get at those linebackers and so forth. And he, it was a great insight. And he, it was never, um, it was never screamed till you get it right. It was, it was a thoughtful response to what we were trying to accomplish. And he would work with you. And he was, he stood out right away to me. And we had a pretty good coaching staff. I think we had a, we had a young head coach who was trying to be very professional. Yeah. And um, he, uh, Jeff stood out. He was unique in that coaching staff to me uh, right away. So, so in the time that I've gotten to know Jeff, this loud New York street smart demeanor, how did that mesh with the Cornell Academia football player? <laughs> I, I, I was all the time. I don't, were, were there classes being held? Cause I, I didn't. <laughs> I missed that whole piece of it, if that's the case. There's an academic thing? I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell him. I'm not supposed to tell him. Oh, okay. uh, I, again, my, my, my recollection of him was that th that sort of strength, that confidence, um, and that ability to identify was always there. Because whether um, you were super intent on academics or you were just struggling to get there, what we all had in common was football and, and the love of the game and the love of being together and, and, and the love of the work and the fun. And that was how he identified was trying to find that common ground. That's why I went to the humor example, because we were all a bunch of, and as you can tell, we are still a bunch of goofballs and we'll always be probably 18 mentally, but um, he, he just found that way to, I think, find that common ground. Um, and he would joke about it, honestly, you know, he, he would joke about, when, when you'd blow an assignment or you'd forget the call or, or everyone else would start running and you wouldn't, uh, that's when he'd have a little fun at our expense as it related to that supposed intellect that we all carry around. 
Mm. But I'm a loud Long Islander, so for me, it was easy as could possibly be that match. It was perfect because he fit perfect with what I was looking for. It's great. I don't remember there being a lot of prim and proper in the uh, in the locker room no. uh, ever. Uh, so he fit right in. Uh, yeah. Absolutely no problem. Yeah, the 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 Ivy the, the Ivy part of the Ivy League is was was not prevalent in our locker room. It, it wasn't it wasn't a very erudite environment um, to begin with. So he he uh, yeah fit in. He was great. He he uh, he was also enthusiastic about offensive line. Man, I'm gonna describe it to you like if you know line my son plays football now and he wants to be a running back and all this kind of stuff and he's like who cares about line and it's like yeah it's mm. you get your name gets called when you get a holding penalty you know um and jeff was legitimately enthusiastic about making big blocks getting a second block getting a pancake he had us on a point system he wanted to give out awards he was earnestly and legitimately fired up about the position mm. and he was fired and, and we were fired up about it and it made it special and engaging. And I, I don't know, I felt like, why would I ever want to carry a ball when I could play offensive line yeah. and, and do what we were doing? We were, I, I felt very fired up about it, um, where it was always like, yeah, you play line because you couldn't possibly do anything else. This was, um, this was a, a goal in and of itself. I, 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 re I remember that. Go ahead, Dave. Mike. I coached both my son's tackle football teams and, these guys will laugh. I started to practice with the drills that Stoutman did with us, the step drills. And a three-point stance, left stance, left stance, left step, right step, right step, pull step. And I did it with them every day. And they'd be like, what are we doing? I'm like, believe me, if this it's good for this guy who's the best offensive line coach in the country, it's good for you 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds who think you know everything. <laughs> so we did them all the time. You know, it's interesting that you guys say that. Do you find that in your, in your lives now there are still personality traits uh, that that you got from Jeff that you apply to your daily lifestyles now? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump on that one. Um, yeah. I would say absolutely. Um, I, I, it didn't occur to me until later in life, but um, mm -hmm. when you grow up as an offensive lineman, as Stein said, number one, there's a tremendous amount of pride in what you're doing because uh, what you understand is that you decide the outcome of the game every time, even though your names are never on the loudspeaker or in the paper. Uh, but the other thing I think as a, as a leader, um, you know, I very much have that style of get in the huddle, discuss what you're going to do. My job is to clear all the big heavy crap out of the way and let this good looking, good looking people score the touchdown and I'll meet you in the end zone. And as a leader, that's gone a hell of a long way, not only to Mike's point about the steps and the practice and the repetition and the discipline, but also the lack of ego. Right. Like there is no ego on the O line. It, it, it can't exist. And that's proven, I think, pretty effective in the the world of uh, leadership, for sure. Yeah, we, we talked a lot about his intensity. We also we haven't talked a lot about his ability to make fun of himself uh, and yes. not take himself very seriously. Uh, and just to get to your original question, that that's something that I try to take with me throughout my career, throughout my dealings with my children. Is you know, it's okay to be intense. It's okay to be intense in the moment to get you to where you're trying to get but don't ever take it so far that you're taking yourself too seriously and uh, whether I learned that from him from him or not it's certainly something I remember about him is, is his ability to to laugh it off and to admit that he's not one of you smart guys from Cornell he's just a guy from Staten Island New York and um, he, he was just a just a really fun person to be around and that's certainly something that I remember about him now yeah, I do I do Go ahead, Mike. Sure, go, ahead. go ahead, Dave. Go ahead. Go ahead. What I was going to say is these guys may not remember me this way, but I was a bit of a slacker um, in, in the season. I know it sounds true. You guys probably don't remember that, but I, I was a bit of a slacker. Um, and I, I don't come from a slacker family, but in, in, in truth, Jeff helped me connect something inside my heart where hard work, the hard work that I grew up around, I was able to employ. So where as he came in telling me, you're not – you're not up to snuff. You're not, you're not trying hard enough. The effort is not there. I was able to, by my, by my junior and senior year, become a very hard worker, got into great shape. And I credit Jeff entirely with that in terms of helping me find my way to be a hard worker. Cause I remember it. I think about it. It's part of my thinking from time to time. He was telling a story when we were kids, we were playing for him. And he was like, I went for a run today and I ran for whatever he did five or six miles. But then I thought of you guys. 
and how you guys can't quit. So I couldn't quit. So I did an extra whatever miles he did. And it's like that, that the hard work being the virtue itself and the work being an end in of itself and it being good to do it. I don't know. It sort of, it, it came together for me with him. Um, that has been with me ever since. I, I, I was going to say, I think the thing I take from him is like, I never felt like he was, had a bad day. He was always enthusiastic. He was always on. And I try to be that way every day with work. You know, you don't always want to be at work. You don't want to be dealing with your family. You don't want to deal with everything. But he always seemed like he was all in with us every day. And I try to take it. And these guys will laugh. I use them. My, my teams I've coached and my boys, whenever they say I'm really nervous, I'm really nervous. I'm like, if you're not nervous, you have to have your saliva check because something's wrong with you. Because that was like his line all the time with us. Like, something's wrong with you if you're not nervous. you got to have your saliva check. And my boys laugh at me because I use it all the time with them now. So it's funny. As amazing as it seems, it's 1993. It's 30 years ago. I mean, just think about how much time has come and gone since then. But let's go back to 93 again for a moment. In that particular season, give me, each one of you guys, give me one thing that really stood out about that season uh, as you evolved as offensive lineman with Jeff Stoutland. Oh, man. Uh, Mike, you're going to have a memory for this. We we came out of a halftime. I, we were at home. I forget what team we were playing. And Stoutland got us fired up. I forget what he said as a unit. Mike was our team captain. Okay, one of the captains of our team. Um, so there was there was something. I forget what it was. But we came out. We came out in a very tight formation. I think it was in bone, wishbone, with a lot of running backs. And we ran off tackle and scored a touch. Chad scored a touchdown. You guys remember this? You remember, you remember what was said at halftime? No, I, I, said, I think what, this is 94, though, right? This is our senior year? I think it was our senior year. I'm not yeah. sure. Okay. Okay. Let, let, let me just jump, in. Let me jump in. What I remember was we did not have a good first half. Right. And we were not executing, and it was not going well. Uh, and our head coach at the time said, we will live by the run, and we will die by the run. And we came out in the second half, and I was not on the field at the time, but you guys gaped a hole that I could have run through. And <laughs> our running back, Chad, I remember off tackle right Stein for like, I don't know, 60. It was some absurd yardage that he covered, and we scored on the first play of the second half. That's my recollection. Out of, out of, a, out of a very tight, like out of a grinded out, we're going to get four yards formation. We blew it out for a touchdown, and it was it was pure emotion. And, and I, I just remembered – that's a big memory I have for Jeff. There are others, but that's the first one that came to mind. I'm sorry it's not 1993, apparently. I think. No, was... I, I would say the biggest thing I took from him, and it's not just a moment, was just he taught me how to play the position. Like, I didn't know how to play him. Like, I came out of high school, it was a smaller high school. You know, I just was bigger and stronger than the kids and would push them around. And he taught you the actual steps and the angles and the hand placement and just things that, like I said, I take that. I go up with my boys before they start up to the field with dummies and we work on the same punch drills we did. And it's because it, I'm sure he's still doing, it. you know, they're not outdated. So he actually taught me how to play the position and you really became a real player because of what he told me. No, our first coach noise that we loved was just crazy and yelled at you and made you scared that you played because you were scared where Stoutland really taught you the position and the ins and outs, but he was, you know, I can't say we realized he was such a great coach. I don't know if you guys, I didn't know that at the time, you know, like, again, we were, getting drunk in the weekends, chasing girls around and playing football when we could. Like, I, so like, how dare practice. you, sir? What's that? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Yes, yes, 100%. But he was, he was great. He was great. Yeah, I, I would just build on that and say, you know, we, we became a very different offensive line after he took over the reins in that we became much more of a pulling line. Uh, so a lot of movement on the line. Uh, to Mike's point about learning the position, it was more about more than just, where to step, where to place your hands was how to work with the guy next to you, how to how to chip off the guy next to you and get to the next level, to the third level. Those are not things that that I certainly knew before uh, working with Jeff. And, and um, you know, we became a very uh, good team of five people across the front line working together because of his uh, coaching. And, and that's that's what I remember most about his sort of uh, kind of his brand that he put on on our our team did his coaching style ever get mundane with you guys you know in, in all the players i've interviewed you know it, it's almost like parenting you know you tell your kids the same thing over and over and all of a sudden it falls on deaf ears did did, did his coaching style ever get mundane with you guys 
I think if you like the person that's coaching you, okay, uh, and he he went a long way to 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 making us like him. You know, you're you're willing to you're willing to run through whatever you have to run through for him. Uh, and as pissed off as he might make you at any one moment during practice or during a game based on something you did or something he said to you, you were willing to run through a wall for him because he was just that likable guy that we've been talking about all along, seeing him on the weekend, seeing him with his wife, stacking wood with him, those types of things. If you like people, you're willing to do things for him. I'd also say he, he did a really good job at least for me, um, uh, taking you beyond the one step or the one thing had to do and explaining why it mattered. So Gorm just mentioned the, you know, the chipping and the pulling and the getting to the next level and the teaching, he would explain why all those things mattered. And for some reason that helped make everything click so that it wasn't boring because you were all of a sudden as a lineman aware of the interconnectivity and the cause and effect of one step, one block, one move, then that it had on another. And I think that's pretty, that, at least for me, that, that never lost my attention. Yeah. It never got boring. Never. And Mike, Mike made a very good point about being a technician. He taught us how to play. Like it wasn't just pushing and shoving. It was six inch steps or eight inch. Like everything mattered. It was his, one of the things he said all the time was it's a, it's a game of inches. He meant it. And in terms of being mundane, he would show us clips of sumo wrestlers in terms of getting their hands back in for a second bite. Wow. He showed us clips of Alexander Kurilin, the Russian wrestler um uh olympic gold medalist freak show from siberia so he was coming at it he was going to get us to understand the details however he could and i i think it had a great effect um i think it was the very 1980 tight. hockey team remember he showed us a 1980 hockey team clip to get us all pumped up for a game that was cool that's right yeah. he was fired up man he was fired yeah. up he made us fired up he wanted to fight dave too you want to, he didn't want to <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. Did, we go. Did, did. Wait, wait, wait. I got to hear this one. He wanted to fight Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I'll, I'll let the guys tell the story, but he. No, no, you yeah, tell, 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 tell it. Tell it. <laughs> he, uh, I, was a, I was a real, I was a real immature kid. Um, I was even immature, that, more immature than I am now, which is saying something. And he was trying to motivate me and he was frustrated by my lackadaisical attitude. And at one point, he did challenge me to a foot race, which we never did. Um, but also he said that we should have a rock fight. Um, now, what? presumably rock fights are standard operating procedure in Staten Island. I'm from Great <laughs> We never had rock fights. They weren't allowed. No, um, great let us do it. Um, but he wanted to have a rock fight with me. And, you know, obviously, even then I knew he, he was just saying, come on, man, you, you, have, you have way more to offer than you're giving. Right. And and let's go um but yeah he was he was not afraid to to i was big man i was six four two seventy five, and he was not afraid to get right up to my nose and let me know exactly what was going on am i am i missing something boys is that is that no, i mean he 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 would he would get in the mix with anybody on the line with no helmet on you know i, I mean just to teach you to keep your head back <laughs> you know he'd get in there and he'd he'd, he'd run a full bore play without any pads on uh yeah that was the kind of guy he was absolutely not afraid at all did any of you other guys ever want to take a swing at him no, no it was you, hate, you hated him sometimes but i never wanted to hit him but you definitely left <laughs> practice some nights hating him well yeah. like, you didn't want to see him again he ran a tough practice man he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't fucking around he wanted us to be yeah. good and he was pushed us hard and we were big we were a big line um, Mike, Jared, and I, you, Brian, you were a year behind us, I think. We came out of a cl the class, the year we were being recruited, Cornell won the championship. And that was, was that Hoffer's first year, boys? Yeah. So we were a big class. I think there were 90 kids in our freshman football class. Mm. It was a, we, were, we were big, and we were a big line. Um, and Jeff was, Jeff was, was not going to let it go to waste. I, I, you know, in mm. retrospect, he, he really was like, we're going to make something happen with these guys, I think. That, that's my guess. The other thing I remember, because I definitely did this, was he did not accept live feedback after a, a, a drill. Uh, <laughs> I was like, if he didn't think I did something, but I thought I did, I would let him know that I thought I did. And he would not, for he would run all the way to the end of the line and look me in the eye and just let me know that we disagreed on that part particular. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's definitely not, this isn't, this isn't going to come across the way I want it, but he's a simpleton. I mean, that's really what he was, you know. He's a savant 
offensive line coach. That's what he yeah. was, you know, yeah. like yeah. that's what he was all about. Yeah, he was he was he is disproportionately talented and narrow and deep in what he does, no doubt. And great of all of yeah. all the words uh, I thought you guys might use to describe Jeff Simpleton was not one of them. <laughs> Can you edit that out, Mike? Yeah. Oh no, no, that's definitely staying in there. There's yeah. no, no question about that. Wait, is he yeah, gonna I, see I, this? I forgot to tell. I forgot to tell yeah, but if he's gonna see this, you know. <laughs> I oh, forgot to see fight. it. Oh, yeah, he's going to see it. I don't want to get into a rock <laughs> fight with him, man. I'm sure he's fucking <laughs> Stoutland's only request was be nice. Uh, too late. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, what you guys are telling me is he was able to take your individual pride level in what you did and athletic prowess in what you did to a whole nother level. Is, am I accurate in saying that? Yeah. I think that's that more than fair. Yeah. And, and kept it fun, which is hard to do. Yeah. He was, was great. He one of these, was he one of these coaches when he talked to you? Spray, you know how many coaches? You play for coach, they spray you every day. You want to get in your face and they spray you. Was he one of those kind of coaches also? I don't remember him spraying. I don't remember that. Yeah. I don't remember. I do, I do remember him like. making us extremely close as a unit. Okay. We became much closer because of him. That was a big thing of his. Like, we're the offensive line. We eat together. We stay together. We be like, and he and we were close already, but he definitely ingrained that in us, and that was really, really cool and really fun. Could you guys tell back then, as a whole, that Jeff Stoutland was headed to bigger and better things in his career? I, I, I was so immature. I, I, I kind of agree. I thought he was a great coach, but I don't know if I really saw that. I could lie to you and say yeah, I knew he was going to yep. be. He was great. Well, I didn't know anything. Yeah, I, I, I would say that I, I've been pleasantly surprised watching him go through his career. It's been wonderful. Uh, but at the time, uh, just to what the other guys are saying, like I wouldn't have I wouldn't have known or said that. Uh, and, and that's that's from being naive, not necessarily anything that he ever did. I, yeah, I, would, I would only I would only I would only say I'm not surprised no. based on and no. like everything you just heard about identified with us brought us together, brought pride in the unit, pride in each other, absolutely grinded us to make sure that we were giving our all and our best, really, really thoughtfully heard from these guys about like what he would do after you came off the field to learn and adapt and change. Like, so in retrospect, sure, makes lots of sense. I'm not sure any of us are sitting here shocked that he had a successful career, but to, to stop the point, like freaking idiot, I don't even know if you're out of your own way. Yeah. yeah, but he everything everything Jared, everything Jared just said is yeah. in the definition of leader, right? I mean, and you know, he's he's a leader. Uh, he's a leader because he did all those things that Jared just rattled off. Uh, maybe we were blind to it at the time, but you look back in retrospect and you say, of course, um, uh, he's made it to where he has. What I will and, say is that there were coaches I did not like, and I think that there were other that the other players didn't like and sort of sat, had a sour experience from. But I walked out of there, and Jeff was very tough with me, loving him. So we, what I did do is I walked out of there saying, Jeff Stalin is fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. So that that I knew in my heart for sure. Um, and we did get to hang out with him a little bit afterwards. I haven't seen him in a long time, but when he would come through the area, we would have a beer with him, and he was the best guy ever. I mean, I don't know. I got to know him a tiny bit. God, so man. I got a good story that, 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 that he, he won't like this one. This is a good one about him. <laughs> so uh, we're probably out of school about six or seven years. And he, he reached out to me and he said, he's at a wedding near my hometown. You want to meet out? So my wife, Michelle, and I met him and Allison and one of his friends. And uh, it was just when they passed the law that you're not allowed to smoke in bars. So we met in a bar and he had a cigar in his pocket. And he had, you know, he came from a wedding, was having a good time. It was great to see him. We had a lot of laughs. And he lights up the cigar in the bar and the, and the the bartender's pretty girl behind comes over and goes, excuse me, sir, you got to put that out. Well, he, he went on to light it six more times and, and she yelled at him six times. You got to put that cigar out. He, goes, he oh, apologized every time. And the best part about it was he was never doing it to be a jerk. He just was forgetting and he was so apologetic and then he would do it 10 minutes later and Allison was looking and rolled her eyes and was like, yeah, what are we going to do? Like, <laughs> You know, from a media perspective, we're always looking for personality in coaches. And, and the one thing I say about Jeff is, you know, he's not one to tell you anything more than he has to 
from a media perspective. Yeah, he's not one of these colorful characters on the exterior. You know, when we sit down with him, whether it's one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's in a group setting, you ask a question, he'll give you a definitive answer, and, and, and next. Would you consider him a character? You guys, oh, you played for him? Absolutely, Would you yes. consider him a character? Definitely, 100%, yes. 100%, yes. Yeah. Very strong well, character. Oh, yeah, well, great. I, I would also say, you've heard from all of us about his intensity yeah. and his focus and his his enthusiasm and passion for this. I can't imagine he'd have much energy to do much else. I mean, he poured, <laughs> he poured so much into it. I, I'm not surprised that everything else gets the bare minimum because he directs so much to it. We were in, in the Ivy League in 1993. We were, you know, we all know what that is in the context of the larger sports environment and the levels that Jeff has got at. He took films as serious as a heart attack. He mm. was, he watched those films. He wanted us watching films. We broke it down to the inch. We watched, looked for differences in the linemen and how they set up and where people were set up. It was no playing around. Every moment of prep for that week was dead serious with him. He was extremely intense. So as Jared's point said, at the end of the day, if he wanted to just shut up for a bit, I wouldn't blame him exactly. He was real mm. serious. Are you guys surprised he's become such a prominent fixture in the National Football League? And you heard me say off the top of this podcast, he is arguably the best offensive line coach in the National Football League. He won't tell you that, but there's so many people on the outside looking in, whether you're an Eagles fan or not, but the so-called national pundits all agree there is no finer offensive line coach than Jeff Stoutland. I mean, self-servingly, I, I think of him as the best offensive line coach in the history of the game, because <laughs> I like to say that because it benefits me. Mike, you're a real sports fan. W what are your thoughts about it? I, I don't know. Well, the, the, the body of work, the fact that he left us, which we're, we're none of us are delusional. It's Ivy League football, right? We're not anything right, what right. he's dealing with. Um, but then he went to Miami, you know, which was a big time program. And then he went and coached for Saban and won a national championship there, right? And then go to the Eagles and to be on a Super Bowl championship team, have a whole coaching change come in, and he still stays on the staff. It's pretty easy to see he's really good at what he does, right? And I mean, we could all read the things and we could say our firsthand, he was great with us. I just think we were too immature to realize he was going to be with the best offensive line coach in the country. I shouldn't say all this. I know myself, but I knew he was great. And I knew he took me to another level. And like I said, there's things I'm still coaching that I learned from him. You know, I would coach every day when I coached my kids. So he, he changed my life in a lot of ways, all positive. And, and, and I miss him. You know, he becomes such a big celebrity. Not that he acts that way, but it's hard to keep in touch with someone when he's that big of a person. You know, I'm sure he's got people pulling him at every angle. You know, I'd love it. We should all go to an Eagle game and go see him because I would love to see him. Be yeah, great. Be great. I'd love hey, that. You, you asked you asked if we were surprised that, that he's as big as he is. I'm, I'm not at all surprised for all the reasons that we've talked about. I mean, the one thing that comes to mind for me is, is I'm extremely proud. I have personal pride uh, for something that I'm not even a part of, but I have personal pride for the fact that I worked with the guy. And, and uh, to Mike's point, he taught me so much. I, I thoroughly enjoyed my junior and senior year of playing at Cornell. Uh, I think that's direct uh, a direct uh, testament to his coaching and and what I learned under him and and uh, we were always good enough to make it interesting in games and uh, it, it was just fun place to be and and that's that's that was because of him. Uh, the only thing I would add is that as a result of everything you've heard so far, he's yeah. an easy guy to root for. Okay, you know we we've all had coaches that you look at and think you know if he was walking toward a brick wall I wouldn't stop him right, uh, but. <laughs> Like you would have stop. to stop Stoutland. He'd run through it. Right. Well, <laughs> fair enough. But like you'd at least try to let him know, right? Like, and so I, I just feel like he's he's such an easy guy to root for because he, again, he's a he's a hard ass and he's a technician, but he's also a, a, a tremendous human being. And so when someone like that that you've got this experience with has this kind of success, he's the easiest guy in the world to root for. You know, he's just got a a, a pure heart, a driven mind, and a great personality and great humanity. Like, like Brian said, the pride of having played for him. I'll tell anybody who will listen to me that I played for him. I mean, I, oh, yeah. I just personally yeah. I, I yeah, had great totally. pleasure out of that. And Dave, as, as, as Giants fans, it's tough to say you're rooting for the Eagles, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, my, my son hates it. I pulled for the Eagles all the time now. Cause, cause that was, you know? Yeah. People just mentioned the city Philadelphia. I'm like, well, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles? Well, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Did, did he cross-train you guys the way he does his offensive linemen now in the NFL? 
to what play do you mean by that? Positions. What do you mean by position? To play different positions. Like he's got guys who play guard center, center tackle, guard center, left, left side, right side. Did he cross train you guys also like that? Well, Dave and I came in at tackles. I was a tackle my sophomore year and then a tackle my junior year and my senior year came back in with the, the meetings with the book on the guard spot. <laughs> no one even said it. I'm like, what is this? He goes, you're a guard this year. And I was like, wow, that kind of threw me off. So, yeah, I would say yeah. he did, yeah. Well, Mike, there was a story behind why you and I were moved inside <laughs> after the last game, as you may remember. It's not much to do with Mr. Stoutland, but decisions were made to move us inside. But I, I, I don't know. I didn't – once we were in our position, we were trained in our position, right? They didn't rotate us around – position to position did that I don't, I don't really remember i remember just playing guard my senior year and that was yeah that. i don't i don't remember that i played guard i, I don't remember moving we were not that. athletes like pro athletes that could be molded and i mean you know we right. could barely get us to do what we need to do <laughs> <laughs> how many of you guys keep in, in touch with stout i i i, don't, I did years ago i haven't i wish i had i wish i yeah. had i'd like to I'd love to say I, I haven't talked to him I, I, same, and we, I wish I had, but I have not. I, I'm not sure if you can consider a text relationship a relationship, but we okay. we, have a, we have a text relationship. <laughs> Nowadays, that's a relationship. <laughs> yeah. so, so, just yeah, so just ask, ask your kids. Yeah. So I, I, I ask you guys that for this. So it, from what you're telling me, it's there's been some distance in terms of the personal relationship you've had with him. But because of what he has meant to you, and I, and I know he has an impeccable memory, if you guys picked up the phone and called him right now, you think he will just embrace you like it was yesterday all over again? Hundred percent. I would think so. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. I can tell you. I can tell you that's exactly what happened. I don't know how many decades it's been, but six or seven years ago, he happened to be. He happened to bump into a guy that we played football with, Scott Carroll, and uh, Scotty texted a picture of the two of them, and then Stoutland jumped on the phone and started texting me, and it was like no time had passed. Yeah. We no, were very I, close. I, think I think we were very close with him as as, as players. Um, and, and there's something, you know, when you're in a unit like that, I yeah. was never in the Army, so I have no idea. But I think small unit intense environments breed a certain kind of close relationship. Like these guys, I haven't I haven't seen Brian in a while. And I, and, and it's just we pick up right where we left off. I, I feel like, yeah. I don't want to speak for Jeff, <laughs> but uh, I feel like it would be that way. But I also feel like he'd be the guy that if he had an hour or two, to your point, somewhere yeah. – Yep. He could grab her with you. He would reach out, and it would, you would drop everything to do it. Yep. Oh, yeah. Why? Why haven't you guys collectively, individually, hit him up for tickets? He's got one <laughs> of the hottest teams in the National Football League. I'm sure he can get you some sweet tickets or something. You guys should. You guys should hit him up. Just, just bombard him out of nowhere and say, Jeff, you know, like a reunion. Hey, it's been 30. Years. This is the perfect year for you guys to do it. A 30 year reunion. Eagles. Super Bowl favorites for the NFC. I understand you have loyalties to the Jets. You have loyalty to the Giants. Oh, by the way, the Eagles played both of those teams this year. I'm You're just right. throwing it out there. I'm just throwing right, it out there. Who, who, has his, who has his phone number? I have it. I have it. I'll, I'll, <laughs> let's I'll, do it. That's a great them. idea. I'm let's there. Let's do an Eagle Jet game or an Eagle Giant game. Let's go meet up with him. I'd love I'd to. I'd love to do that. I, I feel <laughs> bad. I mean, he's making a living. I don't want to bother him, you know, but I'd love to see him. Wait a minute. Free tickets, free drink, free beverage, <laughs> possible free sweet. You don't want to bother him one well, time? I mean, well, now that we'll you're bother. saying it, yeah, I'm in. But in general. <laughs> Let's see I how the pot. Have, I know you guys have Giants and Jets loyalties. Would, 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 if you went to a game, could you find yourself rooting for Jeff, even though he's with the enemy? Oh, you, I have. It, if he's not playing the Jets, I could definitely root for the Eagles. <laughs> That's the only way I could. If, he's no, playing I'm saying the Jets, they, if you're there the day he plays the Jets, could you find oh, no. someone in your heart to, to, to root for Jeff and the Eagles? Yeah. Have you seen the Jets defensive, defensive line? Really. They would kick the shit out of the Eagles offensive line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. When, 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 you, when I think of a Jeff Stoutland, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. When I think of a Jeff Stoutland, here's a guy just – and I know he's from New York. But he gives me the persona of just a good old country boy mentality. You know, he doesn't want notoriety. He just goes about his work. He doesn't want to receive any a individual accolades. He lets his work speak for itself. Is that it plain and simple in a nutshell? 
Yeah. I don't know if country, but that humble. You know what I, you know what I mean? Hard working. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The simplicity. Not country. Yeah. I, I, I think that is that. very Staten Island. I think I know a lot of people from Staten Island. My, my father's from Staten Island. He met my mom on Staten Island. In fact, my, my mom went to the same high school as Jeff Stoutland, Fort Richmond. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think a lot of people on Staten Island are that way. Uh, hardworking, nose to the grindstone, salt of the earth type people. But I, I think that's why he, he resonated so much with the lineman position in the first place. Yeah. It fits. Yeah. That's, that's the attitude you have. That's, that's what, yeah. I, I want you guys to to tap into your memories now and, and give me give me a, a, a funny story on Jeff, one that that might make him blush a little bit, you know, that you know about. Hmm. I feel like I hit all mine. I don't know what I have yeah. left. <laughs> I'm trying to think. The the only incremental thing Stein I remember about that story yeah. is. When you were, out of, I forget the exact, you were sloughing off or whatever the hell it was. I was probably right next to you doing the same thing. And he just sort of looked at you. And then he got like that squint and he goes, where are you from, son? That's right. <laughs> and, you go, and you go, I don't know, Long Island. He's like, well, where I'm from, we finished the drill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who, was the, who, was, who was that guy from Yale that was like maybe two years older than us, but everybody thought he was like this nut job that had been, do you remember that? The, 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 he, he would, Stoughton would always say, this guy's like 20 years older than you. He's crazy. <laughs> I think it was a guy from Columbia. Columbia, who, you're right. It was, it was a guy from Columbia who had a kid, I think. Was, it was, was already married with a kid. Is it something oh, market? Yeah, I don't, I don't oh, remember, but he, oh. he used the fact that the guy was older than us to pinpoint him as somebody that was just nuts. And I remember meeting the guy on the field uh, and he was like the nicest guy you've ever met in your life. <laughs> like the, like the, biggest Eric, gentleman, yeah. the biggest gentleman I've ever met on a football field. Yeah, it was Eric Keck, I think was the guy's name. Yeah. He was a I defensive right. tackle. Yeah. yeah. But Stalin, I, I, Stalin would always be telling us, he's crazy, he's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a couple of couple of more questions for you guys, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time to be on with us tonight. First of all, each one of you, in one word, how would you define Jeff Stoughton? One word. Intense. Okay. I, I'd say leader. I think this whole, this whole conversation boils down to that. It's hard to touch those two. I mean, the, 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 the heart, the intensity plus the heart. If there's an English word where you can com combine those two, I, I can't I think would, of it. I would say driven. Driven. Wow. Intense, heart, driven. Wow. Those are accurate descriptions. And, and my final question to all of you is this. If, if you would want people to have one lasting impression ingrained in their minds, of Jeff Stoutland, what would it be and why? I, I think it was the the fact that he was Brian said it earlier, and I said it was just approachable and easy to talk to for such an intense, driven, crazy when you needed to talk to him. And even if it wasn't football, he was there for you, and he was sincere about it. Like you could go talk to him, and he was sincere, and he would talk to you, and as a as a 21 22 year old kid for your coach to be that way that was what probably what stays with me the most about him yeah i just think he, i think he was extremely real um we've talked a lot about how he was when when we were on the football field but uh we've also talked a little bit about the fact that we got a chance to see him uh off the field with his wife um you know before they had kids i mean it, it was it was, um, I don't know if they have kids now or not, but it, it, it was, it was just a genuine guy. I mean, he, he just was real. And, and, and you saw that when he was acting, interacting with us, but when he was interacting with his wife, when he wasn't on the, on the field, it was just, it was the same guy in, in different, in different circumstances. And I, I just love people that are, that are one way all the time. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's what you got with him is, is just a re the real deal. Uh, and that, that's, what I, that's what sticks out to me the most. 
I, I think the, the and you've heard this a few, in a few different ways, but I, I yeah. think the fact that he took the time to understand you, you heard the guys talk about like the game, try to understand exactly what was going on. It was the same across the board, whether it was classes or a girl or your family or whatever it was. He took that time to understand you so that he could then help you make better choices, whether that be football or not. And I think taking the time to understand who you're actually dealing with makes people want to run through walls and chew through cables for you. Mm. I think that it's a, it, I can't touch any of these things. I'm not going to add anything. I'll just say that um, it's a crazy world. I know the NFL is an incredibly intense, powerful organization with a lot of different characters. And, and I, if I wanted people to remember one thing, Jeff's one of the good guys. He's a good man. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. well said. That, that says it all in a nutshell. Jared, Mike, David, Brian, I can't thank you guys enough for taking time out of your busy schedules to hop on gun on one with me and, and, and give us better insight in not just Jeff Stoutland, the coach, but Jeff Stoutland, the man. And of course, as I alluded to earlier, this is the 30 year anniversary. If there's ever a time to hit him up for tickets and maybe some special treatment, this is the year to do it. You said, you said drinks and food too. Yeah. yeah, you had me at drinks and food. So yeah. <laughs> just don't tell him I told you that. All right. Just, be a long just list. All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, uh, these guys, of course, uh, comprised a, a historic moment in Jeff Stoutland's coaching career. His, his first season as, a, as an off offensive line coach at Cornell University back in 1993. So once again, thank you guys so much, and uh, hopefully we'll cross paths again down the road somewhere. And I want to thank everybody out there, as always, for hopping on and listening in to the latest edition of Gun on One. And, of course, until next time, I'm Derek Gunn. So long, everybody. 